We thought we were going to catch you a little early, but um, but you're here. I'm here. I'm ready. You're ready. Ready to go. Should we start with McDavid's socks? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, the biggest problem I had it was uh, had with that was that he was putting those dogs out there for free. You know, you can sell them babies. <laughs> Should be selling, yeah. <laughs> like Jimmy does yeah, with his blur underwear. That photo. <laughs> yeah, he's been wearing the same socks his entire career, apparently, and they are nasty. Well, I've, been, I've been wearing the same underwear for years. Nobody gives me credit for anything. <laughs> They're hanging on by a thread. As long as the band still works, you're good. Such a hockey thing. Eh? Yeah. Such a dude thing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Superstitious. Yeah, very funny. Um, we'll jump into the Kane situation. Uh, there is a conversation that he could be back before the all-star break before the end of the month that's yeah that's word on the street is wow. that he's going to be coming back for a couple of games before the all-star break when we interviewed him we got an interview with evander kane a week ago uh you can go check that one out on the real life podcast he was talking about how he's uh he's a fast healer and when they gave him the original timeline he just, he thought you know what i don't know if it's going to be that long and Man, could we could we ever use him now? So um, hopefully he comes back, and hopefully there are no risks there if he comes back early. But, man, we need him. Could also use some defense and a lot of trade rumors out there. What, do you, what are you thinking with that? Like the D-man available out there, who would you like to see? I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Jacob Chikrin, but whether or not that actually happens, my my expectation of that actually happening is ground level zero because it just – Every name Oilers fans are tied to over the years, we never seem to get them in a trade. So I just, my expectations are low. I imagine Ken Holland's going to trade for a defenseman, but I don't think it's going to be Jacob Chickering. It's probably going to be more like a Jake McCabe type. Uh, Edmondson's name has been around a bunch. Do yeah. I have a preference of those? Yeah, it would still be Chickering, but I don't really get a vote. And we're just going to have to see what happens. But there's no denying that the Oilers need help on defense. They need help keeping the puck out of the net. Yeah, back home. Yeah, they've been talking I, about him. I would love that, but I just the math. I don't. I don't no. see how the math works. They would have to send out a bunch of salary to bring him in. But man, I would love Ekholm to come into Edmonton. The other name I saw was Matt Dumba. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. Yes, night that the Oilers were kicking tires on Matt Dumba. I don't. I don't know why the Wild would trade him. To yeah. be honest, but they're also going into a cap crunch next year where they got those massive buyouts hitting them on the salary cap. So maybe, I mean, he would be a big add. Um, I think they probably need more help on the left side than on the right side. But again, these are all names that are circling the Oilers, and I kind of don't expect them to get any of them, even though they <laughs> could use all of them. At this point, if there's a, a defenseman in the league that might be available, the Oilers are pretty much going to be rumored to be around. Hundred percent inquiring exactly about right. their services. So, well, that's Holland's daily job is to yeah. get on the phone every day and figure out who who he can get on the D line for sure. That that has to be his number one motivation. Um. I don't know whether or not, because we still have lots of time, and I, I think we have this optimism in Edmonton based on the fact that we have two of the best players in the NHL um, lacing them up every game, including tonight against the Ducks. But I think it's worth a conversation. Do you think that if we miss the playoffs again this year, <laughs> Do you think McDavid is long for for these neck yeah, of the woods? I think I think he's gonna be fine. Like you even yeah. watch him talking about on after hours how much he and Leo Drysettle mean to each other. Like, yeah, they're those two are tied to each other, and the only way they're gonna play together is here. So I, I'm not worried about that. I still think the others are gonna make the playoffs, but you know that conversation is gonna come up, especially in Toronto. It's already happening now. Oh, is Connor gonna Connor's doing over there? Blah blah blah. I did. I just. I don't think he's a quitter. I, was gonna I, I think that he's going to stay here. I just, I just don't think he's going anywhere. As I say, Lock, you've been spending too much time talking to hockey fans from Leaf, Ontario. Leaf fans. <laughs> Leaf fans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to worry about it because I'm seeing his frustration. Be I'm seeing him step out on the ice during games now, and you can tell he's trying to put that whole team on his back. And, and he's able to do it at times, right? Um, and, and that's got to be wearing on that kid. You, you, how much longer are we going to – is he going to let 
It's just, it, it's hard to watch when you've got somebody that good. Like he is disgustingly good with yep. just a shit team behind him. Like, it's so hard to watch. And and Oiler fans are getting frustrated. Um, I can't even imagine what him and his agent and, and his family are how they're dealing with it. Is yeah, it worth I, saying? To be honest, it's just not wor- I'm not worried about it. Okay. Really. All right. I mean, I look at a guy like Nathan McKinnon. He won his first Stanley Cup last year. He was hearing the exact same stuff in Colorado for a very long time. And then he finally got over the hump and made it work. So I'm really not too worried about it. I think Connor has got a good situation with Leon here. Those two are like insanely tight. And I think that's probably going to keep them together here. But to your point, Ken Holland's got some work to do. He can't just be sitting there twiddling his thumbs because, like you said, he got the best player on earth here. And he needs help. You don't want to be the guy that wasted it. So (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I hate it. Let we should do this now instead. I, I of, hate to end on a on a <laughs> on a crap note. But. You want to go back to talking about his feet? <laughs> yes, I love his feet. You're gonna be seeing them in Vegas this weekend too. We're very jealous that you're going to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Nation vacation going to Vegas. We leave tomorrow afternoon. Knock on wood. But um, I'm super excited about it. Every time we do one of these trips, we just put an amazing group together, and I know everybody's excited. And we've already got a bunch of messages about where we're doing our viewing party for the San Jose game on Friday. So nice. I'm just super pumped to go. I'm really, really excited. It's All been right. a minute since I've been down there. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of people go down to Vegas for these games. So if you're down there on Friday, look for the Other Nation well, viewing party. You won't miss them. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a guarantee you won't miss them. Uh, there he is, Bag Milk, Oilers Nation. Thanks for, your, uh, thanks for your time as always. Thanks, boys. The Locker Room for Always Plumbing and Heating. Weekday mornings on 95.7 Cruise FM.